Yeah? Yeah. Our first speaker was born in Lebanon and attended medical school at the American University in Beirut. When war broke out, her parents sent her and her brothers to live with relatives in the United States. She finished her medical training at Meharry Medical College in Tennessee, and she is now a professor at Baylor College of Medicine and Molecular Human Genetics, Neurology and Neuroscience, and the Pediatrics Department. She is also an investigator at the Howard Hughes Medical Institute and the director of the Jan and Dan Duncan Neurological Research Institute at Texas Children's Hospital. Her research and discoveries on Rett syndrome have earned her the breakthrough prize in the Canada Gardner Interna and the Canada Gardner International Award earlier this year. Please help me in welcoming our very own Dr. Huda Zabi. Thank you, Madison and Alejandra, for an amazing event. And thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak with you today. As you've heard, you've heard I was born and raised in Beirut, Lebanon, which is a beautiful place. And growing up there, I never dreamt of moving away. I, at the American University of Beirut, I loved medical school. I devoured all the knowledge being offered in my courses. I made friends. I met and fell in love with my husband, William. Life could not be better. But as you've heard, the Civil War forced me to come here at the uh, directions of my parents. And when I could not return, I, find, I had to find a home here. I first must say that thanks to a sympathetic immigration system, I was able to get a tourist visa, switch to a student visa, and transfer to medical school in Tennessee. forward a few years, I was a resident in child neurology here at Baylor College of Medicine. I was frustrated by not having any good treatment to offer for the devastating diseases I saw in my patients. That's when I decided to turn to basic research, fundamental science, for answers. I figured if we could find the root cause of some of these diseases, maybe we could then find ways to develop therapies. I went to a genetics lab to learn how to do basic research, and I was supported by funding from the National Institutes of Health, or NIH. When I joined Baylor as a faculty member, I began my lab with an NIH grant that allowed me to buy supplies and pay a student and a technician to help me do experiments. Within a few years, we discovered the genetic basis of several neurological diseases. Our research over the past years has now led us to a new way of understanding what goes wrong with a host of brain diseases, from autism to Alzheimer. And we have developed several approaches to therapy that we are now testing in animal models. This proved to me that my decision to leave the clinic to invest my effort in research was the right path to take to help my patients. The scientific method takes time, but it does lead to progress. We now have, as you heard, a whole neurological research institute that's devoted to finding way to treat these, disease, to treat these diseases. This is why I'm here today. Determining how science is funded is a political decision that affects our daily lives. And so, our whole community must play an active role in influencing that decision. The pursuit of science provides the knowledge we need to understand our world. But scientific knowledge is only the first step. We need smart decision making to allow that knowledge to benefit mankind. Luckily for my career, when I was a young scientist, both Republicans and Democrats made funding for the NIH a priority, which enabled me, which enabled me to make progress that helps my patients. Sensible immigration policy allowed people from all over the world to come to American universities to study, teach, and make amazing discoveries.
My lab alone has had members from over 25 countries over the years, and the different cultures and life experiences of immigrants add to the creativity of our science. Now, if the NIH budget is slashed by $7 billion, that's the equivalent of eliminating 28,000 research projects and removing 75,000 people from the scientific talent pool. When a lab shuts down, students lose a place to train and the opportunity to fulfill their dreams of becoming scholars who give back to the world. Hundreds of diseases will remain a mystery. Hundreds of potential treatments will never see the light of day because the pipeline of discovery that the drugs and biotech companies turn into marketable products is cut off. We are the pipeline to the pharmaceutical industry. The NIH over the past 40 years has planted so many seeds and it's time for us to harvest them not abandon the field. This march, is up, this march is about our community taking a stand to say that science and the quest for knowledge is important. We therefore have an obligation as citizens to pay attention to our national budget and to make sure that it reflects the reality on the ground. I hope this march allows us to highlight all the wonderful things that scientific research brings to our country. Thank you.